This is Volsmere, and this guide goes over Spider-Man's melee build, Fighting Spider. By selecting Fighting Spider, all of Spider-Man's melee skills will receive a damage increase, as well as additional augments to certain abilities. Click on the annotations, or refer to the timestamps below to navigate through various sections of the video. To begin, here's the skill overview. The Fighting Spider build is a cooldown based skill rotation with one auto attack spirit spender and one on demand dot layer. The rest of Spider Man's skills are powerful, hard hitting moves that go into cooldown when activated. The first skill is Spider Brawl. Spider Brawl serves as an auto attack filler while you wait for skills to go off cooldown. While being a spirit spender, the cost is easily mitigated by a Health Spirit Recovery Costume Core and Spider Man's own signature ability, Amazing Smash which restores spirit upon activation. Spider Brawl deals moderately high damage, and is further boosted by Spider-Man's dodge rating. The second skill is Spider Pummel. This skill's damage is boosted by 200%, and gains an 8 second cooldown due to the Fighting Spider specialization. Being one of our cooldown abilities, Spider Pummel deals 3 hits in a frontal cone, each dealing massive damage to your enemies. The third skill is Arachnid Assault. Another cooldown attack that serves as a brief invulnerability shield. Use this skill as an AoE clear, or when you need to mitigate the damage off a hard hitting enemy attack. The fourth skill is Web Spray. This will serve as our primary dot layer that also applies the vulnerability debuff to our enemies. The damage over time on Web Spray comes from the skill Web Yank, which will invest 1 point. The damage does not scale from further ranks into Web Yank. You want to tag your enemies first with web spray, debuffing them before firing off your attacks. The fifth skill is Acrobatic Attack. Acrobatic Attack is one of three dash type movement skills available to Spider-Man. I chose Acrobatic Attack for its minimal ending animation, allowing for quick movement across the map and over enemies with each use. The sixth skill is Spider Sense. Spider Sense is Spider-Man's defensive passive. Max this skill out to gain defense and dodge rating bonuses. When you activate Spider Sense, you'll instantly break out of crowd control effects and gain a very short buff to your dodge chance. Dodge chance determines whether you completely avoid an attack. The seventh skill is Leaping Assault. This attack always deals a critical hit, making it one of Spider-Man's most damaging attacks. Leaping Assault is on an 8 second cooldown, which aligns itself with Spider Pummel, so be sure to use them off cooldown whenever possible. The eighth active skill is Amazing Smash, Spider-Man's signature move. Not only does this deal tremendous amounts of damage in an area, but it pulls in enemies into your melee range while applying a deadly dot layer. Amazing Smash also has the added benefit of restoring 50% of Spider-Man's total spirit. Time this skill with your costume core to manage your spirit levels. The Fighting Spider rotation is relatively straightforward, as you first engage with Web Spray, debuffing your enemies with vulnerability. Then activate Spider Pummel and Arachnid Assault for your melee spike. Follow up with Leaping Assault and Amazing Smash for the AoE spike and dot layer. Repeat this cycle until the enemy's down. Don't forget to restore your spirit with your costume core and Amazing Smash. For multiple enemies, you could start with Amazing Smash to pull them in, and then use Web Spray to apply the vulnerability debuff. Keep in mind you won't have the benefit of restoring your spirit outside of your costume core until Amazing Smash comes off cooldown. Oh, that's nice. We're having a meaningful chat, and you just fall asleep. Here's the gear setup for Fighting Spider. My pet has bonus base health, bonus spirit, bonus crit damage, plus 1 rank to all skills, and plus 3 to fighting. You can choose to go with plus 2 to melee abilities to further maximize your skills. Having plus 1 to all skills will help you if you plan on trying Spider-Man's other specializations. I'm wearing the insignia of Spider-Man, which grants melee damage rating, dodge rating, and plus 1 to fighting, with a 100% uptime due to web spray. On my costume, I have all 4 critical damage affixes and a bifecta core with plus 1 to strength. Slot 1 is Fragment of Twilight. Fragment of Twilight is a unique that could be crafted from a recipe acquired from Odin's palace. Fragment of Twilight gives bonuses to crit damage, brutal damage, health, life on hit, and also revives you when you're defeated. This unique also has 3 special buffs. Bulwark of Muspelheim, a stacking defense and deflect rating buff. Rage of Muspelheim, a critical hit and brutal strike buff that activates when your attacks crit. And finally, Wrath of Muspelheim, a burning dot layer that activates when you brutally strike. Slots 2, 3, and 4 are Spider-Man's default uniques, all of which focus on his melee skills. 
Make sure to get high rolls on the plus ranks to get your important skills up to 50. My slot 5 is Mask of the Goat. This unique item can be crafted from a recipe that can be bought from Hammer Bay. It gives your character a permanent slow and weaken aura that debuffs enemies. It has very beneficial stats focusing on crit rating, crit damage, bonus health, lower spirit cost to skills, and bonus damage rating against weakened enemies. My legendary is the Shield of Perseus. While a bit overkill for Cosmic Trial, this legendary is great for surviving Cosmic Patrol modes such as Midtown and for Cosmic Danger Rooms. You can also go for the level 70 legendaries. Gunnier, Axe of Ares, and the Shield of Perseus will serve you well for clearing the Cosmic Trial. For Relics, I went with Subterranea. These boost my defense rating which makes Spider-Man that much more tankier. You can choose to go with Relics of Asgard to boost melee damage, or Atlantis to gain more critical damage. For artifacts, I enchanted them all with Blessing of Hela, each granting 5% to your Brutal Strike chance. The first artifact is the Crossbones Teaching Credentials. The credentials are comparable to Gem of the Curse, but foregoes critical damage for a stacking Brutal Damage buff. The second artifact is the Personal Advanced Aim Robot Dispenser. This artifact gives 535 Physical Damage Rating, 193 Crit Rating, and 1056 dodge rating, which in Spider-Man's case, boosts the damage of Spider Brawl and Spider Pummel. The third artifact is the Sacred White Gorilla Necklace. It gives a moderately high bonus to physical damage rating when you crit, and has an inherent crit rating to physical attacks. The fourth artifact is the Mayhem Demon Blood. This artifact is obtained from Mystic Chess, which drop from enemies during the Mystic Mayhem event. It grants up to 500 damage rating, plus 2 to fighting and plus 2 to speed at a full stack of bloodlust, and a high amount of health. It's a well-balanced artifact, increasing your DPS while providing survivability. I'm wearing the Red Skull Medallion. It grants over 1000 brutal damage, and has a plus 2 durability, plus 2 strength, and plus 2 fighting when you brutally strike. Because of having a high crit chance and brutal chance, you can expect the proc to have a 100% uptime. I'm wearing the Uru Forged Armor with the God of Mischief Rune Word. I'm using this mainly for the plus one to all powers, which includes the signature and the ultimate. The Loki runes themselves are not too rare to come by, and this rune word will help you reach your skill's max rank of 50. My ring is the Midtown Guardian Signet. It gives a significant critical damage buff when I'm hit, and when I use any movement power such as Acrobatic Attack, I gain plus 30% damage for 5 seconds. It also grants plus one rank each to melee and movement powers. I chose Spider Gwen because of her range AoE skills that complement the melee heavy aspect of Spider-Man's fighting spider build. Here are the hero synergies. The setup is very flexible and is able to be used for all three of Spider-Man's specializations. Here's the Omega setup for Spider-Man. Starting with Human Augmentation. The Elixir of Immortality is optional, and should be reserved for last after spending your points on more important Omegas. The Elixir acts as an automatic revive when you die. The next time you're facing multiple bosses, or you get yourself into trouble, you can fight a bit recklessly knowing that you have a safety net. The most important Omega on this page is the Goblin Formula. It gives a total of plus 5 fighting, and has a slim proc chance of gaining 5% Brutal Strike, 5% Brutal Damage, and plus 5 Strength. Another recommended Omega is the Reaver Program. At max rank, it gives plus 10% base physical damage to all your attacks. Moving on to the next page, Psionics. You want to pick up the Focus Strength of Grom. The loss of movement speed and spirit are trivialized, especially because of Spider-Man's innate speed buff and spirit recovery. The plus 7 strength will raise the damage of all of Spider-Man's attacks while lowering their spirit costs. Onto Molecular Adjustment. You want to pick up Zero Genesis. This Omega gives you both Brutal Damage and Brutal Strike Rating. There's also a small chance to grant a buff that increases your attack speed, movement speed, and base damage. On the Neural Enhancement page, you want to pick up the Combat Rorschach Training. Because you're going to apply the Vulnerability Debuff using Web Spray, this is an easy pickup giving yourself an additional 10% extra base damage against vulnerable enemies. For the Fighting Spider and Jumping Spider specializations, take the Tactical Neural Implant. 
This Omega gives you critical damage and melee crit rating. Skip over to the Interstellar Exploration page. Because of Web Spray, the Fighting Spider build qualifies for the Hybrid Omega, Skrullos. You'll gain 300 melee and 300 range damage rating, as well as 300 crit rating when you attack with both melee and ranged attacks. On the Mutation page, you'll pick up the Omega fan favorite, Warpath. Warpath at max rank gives plus 10 to fighting. Fighting increases the base damage of all your attacks, as well as boosting your brutal strike rating and brutal damage. Pick up Frenzy to give yourself 600 crit damage when you attack with melee skills. And finally, Nanotechnology. You first want to pick up Spin Tech. Spin Tech is a cost effective Omega that grants bonus damage rating to bosses, the primary enemies you encounter during endgame. Next, grab 5 ranks of Extremist Speed to get 5% attack speed. You can spend any leftover points on physical damage increasing Omegas, as well as utility or defensive options. Now for the Cosmic Trial. The Cosmic Trial can be accessed from Midtown Manhattan when you reach level 60. Successfully completing the Cosmic Trial grants your hero access to all Cosmic Patrol modes in the game. As you start the fight, remember to use Web Spray to debuff the enemies with vulnerability. Bring them in close using Amazing Smash. Utilize your dash to avoid skill shots and other telegraphed attacks. Madam Hydra summons a henchman before putting up her shield. Before you can resume the attack, you need to take down the henchman. The Red Skull phase brings in more waves of enemies. Be sure to apply web spray on as many as you can. Most of Red Skull's attacks are easy to avoid, but be careful when he lays down a red smoke. 
This smoke deals high damage over time, and will kill you if you stand in it for too long. Once Red Skull has reached 66% health, he'll put up his shield. At the same time, a Sentinel will spawn. You need to destroy the Sentinel before the shield goes away. Watch out for Sentinel's stop attack. It deals massive damage and could one-shot you if you're not at full health. Once the Sentinel is down, rush down Red Skull and use your ultimate. You have until he reaches 33% health before he shields up again and resummons the Sentinel. If you're fast enough, you can down Red Skull before he ever gets the chance. I will have my revenge, for the Red Skull shall always return. In review, Spider-Man is a great hero for new players trying out Marvel heroes. He's a fast attacker, has three specializations, and has decent survivability for endgame content. Bad guys look lonely. Let's go brighten their day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to watch more, please subscribe to my channel, Volsmere Gaming. You can follow me on Twitter on @volsmere to keep up to date with my latest content. Feel free to leave your thoughts down below in the comment section, and as always, thanks for watching.